Hello, everyone. Thank you for sticking around for the NFTs for Good track. Um, my name is Lucia Gallardo, and I'm the uh, founder of Emerge and the co-founder of The Eternals. Uh, this is going to be a quick one, so we're just going to do a round of introductions. Um, I'd like to just ask everyone to introduce what you're working on and what makes it particularly impactful, and we can start with Rene. Hey. I'm super sorry for this, but I'm extremely light sensitive, and the lights are killing me. Hi, I'm Rene, co-founder and CEO of Fund the Planet. Our community saves real Amazon rainforest with rainforest tokens. So um, over the past year, I talked to many people about rainforest, and I haven't met a single person who wouldn't want rainforest to be protected and conserved. But why do we lose one acre of rainforest every two seconds? Why did so little of you take action against deforestation, climate change, and the loss of biodiversity? I think the reason is that there's a big lack of transparency, tangibility, and missing reward mechanisms. So, um, in my opinion, this all leads to the fact that nature never had a real chance against capitalism and painful poverty, which we have in those regions. So with rainforest tokens, we conserve and acquire real rainforest, and our community, the owners of the NFTs, get rewarded for their massive positive impact on our planet. And yeah, this is uh, innovative, disruptive solution, and which is only possible due to Web3 technology. And that's why I am here. Hey, everyone. My name is Kirk Allen, and I'm only here for the food. No. <laughs> I'm the CEO and founder of a, a, a project called Caloscope. We are the world's first social media metaverse. And um, for our project, what we're doing at the moment is we're looking to introduce uh, an, an, a project called the Great NF Trees, which is uh, tokenizing the world's largest uh, carbon capture project uh, in Africa. So over the next 10 years, uh, we're looking to work with uh, a company called Sirius Shea. They've, uh, they're backed by the World Economic Forum and the United Nations, and we're looking to grow about uh, one trillion trees. So the, the concept is really, uh, a lot of the times, we try to donate to a lot of these tree causes. You wanna, you know, you, you pay some money, but you don't even know if they're gonna plant the tree or not. So what we uh, plan to do is we tokenize the trees that are being uh, grown, and then you can then uh, view them in mobile mixed reality through our platform where you can display these uh, virtual trees in, um, in the metaverse, and at least you have proof that you have contributed to some sort of a sustainable cause. And now, what this uh, does is it, it introduces uh, the ESG uh, formulation to companies, organizations, and uh, individual retailers so that people can contribute in making a difference in the climate impact. So uh, that's just a little bit about us, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm really excited to be here, too. Um, I am Bobby Mascara. I am on the Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee. I also run a school called Ledger Academy, which is a metaverse blockchain school. I'm here to introduce a project called The Giving Chain, which is a disaster, a global disaster relief blockchain open source platform uh, to track charitable donations. Um, it is written it leverages NFT technology. It is written in Hyperledger Firefly with a token connector to the Ethereum testnet. Um, we want this platform to be available when there's a disaster anywhere in the world um, so people don't have to worry about the tech stack when they're trying to do a supply chain. Um, and that's what the giving chain is about. Hi again. Um, I'm Lucia, and uh, I work uh, with Emerge and with the Eternals. Uh, Emerge has been working on, on diverse applications of NFTs for good with clients from the UN to Hard Rock International. Um, and then our flagship project for NFTs for good is called The Eternals. It's a collection of uh, 
rainforest plots that are connected to the rainforest in real time. So they reflect what's going on in some of our areas of impact, uh, whether it's skylight changes, weather changes. If it's raining in the rainforest, it's raining in your plot. Um, we also have uh, them be responsive to how much you contribute to rainforest protection as a cause. So the more that you contribute, the more your plot starts to blossom and become more visually complex, as well as include more benefits uh, from just being part of our community. Uh, the plots are also regressive, uh, which has been highly experimental. We uh, actually made it so that if you stop contributing, the plots go back to their basic state, um, and therefore they're a measure of impact themselves. We're donating 55% of the proceeds to an organization that works with nine local and indigenous communities in Peru and Ecuador. Um, and we've also taken extreme measures to reduce the carbon uh, footprint of our project. Uh, we had estimated that this collection would uh, produce about 68 tons of carbon if naturally produced in the way that most NFT collections are produced. By taking very active steps, we've actually managed to reduce that to 6.8 tons of carbon. Um, so it's a significant change we're particularly proud of. Um, and we've also built an, a game environment that allows you to plug in your plot and explore it and uh, just benefit from being immersed in, in the world of rainforest. So for us, it's really about gamifying um, NFTs to suit the particular cause that we're passionate about, which in this case, similar to some of my panelists here, is, is about rainforests. Hey, I'm David. Um, I'm working with mainly Axie Infinity Play to Earn game. It doesn't sound like uh, impact uh, here. It doesn't sound like it would be in this category, but it actually uh, is for many reasons. First, I'm working with like 130 people in the Philippines who are working on day-to-day -day basis within this uh, Play to Earn game. They're playing with the game, they're getting tokens about it and they can transfer these tokens into like real money they can use on a day-to-day -day basis. So for them it used to be like, it was uh, like a life changer as they got much more money than they used to be in the past. So they have like better life, they can invest, they can improve lifestyle, like pay for medicals and so on, so which is the first good step. Second, really interesting thing is like, the um, Philippines got a huge typhoon in the last month, so everything was more or less destroyed, and Axie Infinity was the only thing they could play during that time. They could not go fishing or, or what they did before. So by only like a phone, a plug, and electricity, they could, work, they could play with the game and get money out of that, which means that it, was a, it played a huge part in the reconstruction of this, uh, this village. And last thing, it's a good thing as it, like, uh, it allows to share the value and the money which is in the Web3 environment. Web3 is a lot of money, it's a lot of uh, value created, uh, but mainly in developed countries. So by sharing it with like uh, play to one games, uh, undeveloped countries can get part of that. Uh, we're talking about Philippines here, but it's also the case for some countries like Venezuela or, or Colombia or so on. So this is uh, why I'm here today. Awesome. The second question we wanted to address was more forward looking. So we're going to just go around and sort of contribute a little bit about where we see uh, the Web3 space being particularly impactful and where we see NFTs for good going. So Rena, if you want to kick us off again, please. Hey, um, I believe, and this is what we saw and we learned so much about that, that in the field of having impact, there's a huge accounting accountability issue. So you have on the one side, the bookkeeping accounting, where you actually write down, this is what happened, this is, this person is responsible for that and this person gets credit. I think many of you already heard of carbon credits. And this is actually systematically a totally corrupt system which has double accounting issues and also which in some cases leads to more deforestation where it should stop deforestation. Um, this is a big problem which can be stopped, can be solved by blockchain. I mean, we solved double accounting issue for uh, virtual money, so why not for this too? And what's even worse in uh, many scenarios is that there is a moral accountability issue. Moral means there are volunteers, donators, maybe some of you are feel um, like one of them, but some NGOs um, have this impact. They do afforestation, they save rainforest, but then they sell the CO2 credits to a company and suddenly they are responsible for that. Suddenly you have an NGO which is responsible for that. You have volunteers, donators, and a company. So this is a, a huge issue. So I think the, for the future, this is the first thing we should solve 
And if you have this solved, the bookkeeping and the moral one, you can talk and think about how we can reward the people who have the impact. Let's say everyone who had an impact gets an NFT, and suddenly you have a mechanism you can make them accountable and also reward them. And this is where I see the, the biggest disrupting change. Yeah, and no, I totally uh, agree, Rene. So from my perspective, there's three ways uh, the future of NFTs for good could go to. Uh, the first way is the, the traceability factor, like you mentioned, that people, when you want to contribute to something, you want to be able to find out if I'm actually contributing to it or where it's going. So maybe be having some sort of a, an NFT or an asset that proves that you are the owner of, uh, or actually contributor of something more than just, uh, just for money, you're just putting it for uh, a donation or a cause. Uh, the second way I think that uh, NFTs for good is gonna change uh, things is the ability to create communities within those collections. So people, you know, you, you, everybody has uh, a little group that they either want to contribute to, whether it's for children, whether it's for sustainability, whether it's for uh, mental health, whichever it is, you come up with a little community because people want to contribute to changing the world. And uh, NFTs have shown that by creating these communities, you can have uh, a larger impact, not just in the moment at present, but also for the future, because more people uh, get educated about your cause and then you get drawn into a community where you can talk about the same topic. And the final way I think that the NFTs for good or the future of impact could be is the ability to gamify uh, contribution uh, on something of this scale. So, you know, you can really create competitions, maybe uh, get more people to say, I want to contribute more or get recognized to be contributing to a lot more than just, I'm throwing money into this, I'm collecting because of whatever, but you get rewarded for, um, uh, uh, for being a contributor, being a part of a community that you're trying to build. So that's me. Um, I think how NFTs are going to uh, change the way people um, can donate and give. Um, I see it with Hyperledger. We've tried to do this project for four years. It failed miserably because their NFTs weren't there yet. So what we do, in, like to run you through like a use case for this giving chain project, say there's like a tornado in your town. Um, an event manager or, or someone has to register the event. And that initiates the Firefly nodes, which are donors, transporters, and recipients. And if you're a donor and you have blankets to go to the school that needs it in your town, you would just put the blankets outside, call up the Giving Chain app, you would take a picture of it, and that picture becomes an NFT. And that's how we solve the problem. Because now you can digital twin the donation with the NFT, transfer when the transporter picks up, that the NFT not only alerts the transporter that the donation is there, but it also is the security needed when you transfer the donation. So he takes possession of that NFT, puts it in his truck, takes a picture of the NFT in his truck, that becomes part of the metadata of the NFT. He goes on his way to where he's dropping it off at the recipients. The recipient takes a picture when they receive the donation. That all becomes the NFT, um, and there is no cash exchange. The platform is there for whoever wants to register an event, a catastrophe. We've done several projects now with uh, transporting um, goods to NGOs over in India. We've helped the U.S. vets, get, um, homeless vets, uh, giving bags. Um, one of them sitting over there. We've packed them with stuff to help them. And we've done a lot in um, New Jersey with the farmers to the food banks. So this project's working. It's new. Um, we could use contributors. Um, so if you're interested, it's thegivingchain.org. So. And this was the developer track like five minutes ago. Yeah, so. Sorry, I'm the wrong <laughs> <laughs> I jumped. Um, I think uh, I agree with a lot of what's been said. I think the way that impact is shaping community making, community building, and organizing people around social movements is really important. Um, I think serving as proof of impact, not just for individual action around your donations or your contributions, but also around collective movement. So, for example, with the Eternals, uh, we have random events that occur for everyone in uh, our, all of our collectors 
their plot, all, it all evolves depending on how the organizations we're supporting are also meeting their impact targets. So there's individual incentive to continue to evolve your own plot, but also you are impacted by how effectively the organizations we're working with are also meeting their targets. So this kind of proof of impact, it uh, builds two types of socioeconomic incentives, one of which is to give constantly, the other one is to support the organization in its goals and achieving those targets. I think a second really key area um, is this idea of reimagined economic and financial instruments. Uh, in our case, we really wanted to inject a little more financial sovereignty into NFTs as, a, as an instrument. So for us, you know, right now, if you go and you flip an NFT in the secondary market, maybe not in this market, but in, <laughs> in a regular, in a better market, um, the goal is, you know, the market sets the price and you're trying to make as much capital from it as possible as a return. But in our case, uh, you have decision-making power in how you flip that NFT. If you are in a basic state, you just bought our NFT, that's fine, you can flip it and it has a certain value associated with which the market will help set. But you can also put in the work to grow and evolve your NFT and that means that it gets more aesthetically complex and it also gains more benefits, which means that on resale, if you've put in the work of impact, then that also returns potentially a higher amount for you back. And that kind of financial sovereignty is something that we've constantly preached about in Web3, but are still thinking about how to really create the financial instruments to enable that kind of active participation in, in uh, market and price dynamics. Um, and then the last thing I think is really important is just the environmental efficiency with, within which we build Web3. We're all right now recipients of a lot of flack for the environmental impact that we have. And that narrative is very incomplete because it focuses purely on uh, energy consumption. But there are a lot of things that we can do within Web3, such as, for example, changing our uh, power mixes of where we render our NFT collections, which is super energy consumptive, away from oil and gas-based economies like the US and into other markets like actually France, uh, which pr primarily is based off hydroelectric or nuclear energy. And that alone can reduce more than 40 tons of carbon emissions from your collection. So thinking critically about how we build uh, and what kind of environmental practices we put in place is also just as important. So that's where I see it going uh, in terms of focus. Uh, we'll talk mainly about the financial sovereignty part because uh, NFT are a wonderful way for like uh, people who live in undeveloped countries and developed economy to, to get new options, new alternatives, which was not the case before. We talked about play to earn, but it's also the case for like developers. We saw a lot, we're seeing a lot of developers who are working in the app free industry who are like uh, getting much more money than they used to be in the past. Uh, it's also the case for like some people are grinding whitelists, they're flipping NFTs, they're doing some trading, so they're getting money out of that which was not possible before. So all these um, opportunities give a, be a better sharing of the resources, of the money, of the value between developed countries and developed countries, which was not the case before. So they're accessing that new opportunities. The other thing which is really important is like the, um, some countries we had like some uh, issues with currency. Uh, like uh, unstable currency or currency who has like low values, they cannot get uh, get them in crypto, which is more stable in some way. So they can choose uh, another option to the local currency, national currency. So I'm uh, thinking like um, NFT are a real uh, life changer for some people in uh, some countries. I'm thinking of uh, Pakistan, Philippines, uh, Venezuela, uh, like Bangladesh and uh, Uzbekistan and so many others now. Which uh, where we can see like people uh, gra uh, grasping opportunities, getting them, getting much more money, and having a, a much better life than they have before, and escaping poverty for for that way. So uh, this is why I'm thinking about uh, the good that can get uh, we can get out of NFT today. Awesome. And then we had one last question planned. Uh, it is if you had one piece of advice to people that are in this room that are thinking about bringing a little bit more impact into their NFT projects or their Web three projects. Um, like, where would you guide them? How would you guide them? I can go first. Um, consider the blockchain you're using for your project. Um, yeah, talking about Ethereum. I love Ethereum. Ethereum and Vitalik and Proof of Stake is part of my prayers since four years. Um, but it's really important that you, if you want to have, for instance, a positive ecological impact with your project, um, Ethereum is not the right place to go. It's issuing, emit, emitting massive amounts of CO2, and there are good alternatives, but also in terms of those alternatives, look at those which are truly sustainable and will be there in like 10, 20, 100 years, talking about Terra Luna, for instance. So this is another aspect you have to consider. 
and it's not easier to make the decision, I know. Uh, for me, uh, I would say, as Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. So if you want to be able to change something, you got to build something that other people will use. You know, you want to be able to use it yourself. And whether it's contributing to certain causes, just make it as enjoyable as people can or as seamless as it can. It's about the user experience. You know, people want to contribute, people want to be able to uh, make an impact. But it's up to us as developers, as uh, project leaders to make it easier for those who don't know anything about blockchain, who know not much about uh, crypto or NFTs or the metaverse. But you know, as we transition to Web3, uh, you know, things would get easier over time. But we really believe that uh, just, make it, just think about the end user uh, all the time and uh, make that impact that you wish to change the world. I think that um, for people who want to get involved in social impact projects, I just know from my experience, go to Hyperledger and join a working group of wherever you're interested in. And um, I know from the giving chain, ever since we started this in 2016, every summer we run a food drive and give it to the food banks. If every person in this room did that, we'd feed a lot of people. Awesome. I think um, I'm going to stand up for proof of work based blockchains right now because I think they get a very bad rap, but there are a lot of solutions that are in place that can really change the way that we build in, like in, with more efficiency, such as using layer two transactions like Matisse that just presented, or by thinking about what the power mix is and also where the energy is being sourced from and how much computing power we're using for our collection. So when you are building, think critically about the financial instrument itself. Right now, Web3 looks a lot like Web2 in many ways, and that's very, very problematic. So thinking about what type of instrument you're creating in Web3 is really important, and thinking about how you're building it is the second critical thing. Also, we are unveiling our NFT collection tomorrow at an event, so another way you can uh, participate is by coming to it. So if you do want information for it, please find me. I'm going to hang around for a bit with my co-founder who's in the back, um, and we'll give you information for the event. So um, support projects that already do uh, have social impact, and then think critically about what you're building and when you're building it and how you're building it. Uh, my point is, like, if you want to have a bigger impact, it's important to, to understand who you're talking to and what are the interests. Like, it needs to be a win-win situation if you talk to someone and at some point he's not going to find his interest in what you're doing. In the end of the day, it's not going to last. So you, only, you always need to think uh, to put yourself into the position, the, the person you're talking to, what is his interest, how can I help him, and transform it into a win-win situation. If not, uh, the impact will be limited and it won't last in the time, which is not what you want to achieve. So this is basically uh, simple advice, but uh, can change a lot of things, I guess. We ran through our questions with time to spare, which I'm super proud of. But maybe we can take one audience question if there is one, because um, we've got a couple of minutes left. Or not. Don't all go at the same time. Yeah, shoot. Yeah, of course. So um, first of all, for instance, how we did it, we put all the information about the land we acquired, what's going on there, and how it's divided into pieces and who eventually which person protects what on the blockchain. And the blockchain is a public, da public database, so everyone can check it up. Everyone can look at that, first of all. So you have like an open source system, and you can trust that someone minds is even incentivized to find a problem there, competitors whatsoever. So this is the first very important step. And the second is that in those databases from CO2 um, companies, NGOs like Vera or Gold Standard, it's a database which is controlled by, by them. And they make it public, but only to show the, the uh, company how much CO2 is offset, it, which is linked to a project but this project is not that well documented. And at the same time, you have many other databases you have to consider. And there's more and more CO2 verifying companies coming up. And it's, I would say, almost already impossible to really trace back to make it, to see clear accountability, what's going on there. 
I would just add to think of it maybe like a supply chain issue and also a data traceability issue and a data integrity issue. So really trying to leverage complementary technologies, maybe IoT sensors and looking at other forms of measuring um, and then integrating that into publicly traceable uh, platforms and, and protocols. I think that would alone be really, really helpful. The other thing is the meeting of the requirements for what makes a good carbon offset. There's good carbon credits, there's bad carbon credits, and having more visibility around who's selling and buying bad carbon credits is also a really important step in addressing this kind of issue. That is our time. Thank you all so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.